Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Very good morning to all of you. And I greet Pastor Sankuti Matthew, uh, dear Dawson Achan and family, and all those who are gathered here in the name of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. So it's uh, what a blessing to be in the church of God. Praise the Lord. I thank God for the eternal life, Church of God, and all the uh, the love and fellowship that I received in the last uh, two days from Sacramento. Praise the Lord! Let the people of God of Sacramento, the body of Christ, the church here, and through you, let all the peoples of the city be blessed. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 So you are placed here. As the light of Sacramento, as the salt of Sacramento, and you are the people of God, you are like a city or placed on a hill shining for the Lord. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. So this morning, uh, uh, we had a, yesterday night, we had a wonderful fellowship and sharing at the Brother Sumatra's uh, house. I thank God for that and I know many of uh, the families are not attending uh, physically, they are in the Zoom. I also greet all of you. So I pray that the sharing this morning be a blessing to the body of Christ and let the name of the Lord be glorified. So this morning I want to focus, uh, uh, basically I will be sharing my testimony uh, because uh, most of the people are new, only half of the people of the church came yesterday night. So I'll be sharing a little bit of testimony, not elaborate, then uh, we will also uh, meditate the word of God. But I pray that let God speak to us. Praise the Lord. Amen. Now church is not just uh, an option, but church is, church life is the center of our life. We are united, not by our will, but by the Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord. So, those who are taking the church as a serious matter, the fellowship there, the worship there, it is a real blessing and I believe we will be enriched by the fellowship, by the prayer, by the praise, by the worship, by the word and whatever is happening to the church. It is for the edification of all of us. So this morning, uh, I will be uh, talking the message today uh, on a theme concerning walking with the Lord. That I shall explain later, but uh, now I shall share a little bit of my testimony. As you know, my name is uh, P.T. Subramaniam. So, uh, that uh, you know that I am not uh, born in a traditional Christian family uh, in the usual sense. Uh, so, as the word of God says, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Uh, I was called by the Lord and became a new creation in Christ at the age of 60. Before that, in my past life, I had uh, no privilege of uh, going to the church or attending a Sunday school or seeing Bible or anything like that. My parents, as they were Hindu, <coughs> Brahman uh, family, and uh, including my father, uh, a Hindu priest, and uh, all my relatives, uh, I was trained in the Hindu tradition, especially from the age of eight onwards. I was trained, I was taken to the temples to do pujas and worship many Hindu gods and goddesses. That was my life and at the age of 12 they have conducted the Uvanena ceremony and put the sacred code and they sent me to the Gurugula in a Tamil Nadu to learn uh, the Vedas the, uh, and the different types of pujas to be trained as a Hindu priest in the temples. Then I continued uh, those things uh, till the age of 16. Uh, I have gone to some different uh, 25 temples and I was doing the worship there and it was that time in the year 1993 along with these pujas I was also going to the college and there one friend gave me the New Testament and shared the gospel for about 10 years and uh, I could uh, uh, read the New Testament I saw it and uh, read it for the first time in my life at the age of 16 and uh, that uh, that time I experienced that Jesus is the real Lord. Praise the Lord. 
so from the lifeless idols and uh, i could re i could realize the living presence of jesus christ the love of christ the peace of christ that uh, i experienced and finally i could accept jesus as my personal savior and lord uh, then uh, there were a lot of uh, commotions and issues uh, in my house and as a result uh, I, before reaching 17 i have to come out of the house and i could not complete my college and a uh, lot of questions there <laughs> and i i myself i found in the year 1994 on a street uh, with the 25 rupees and a pair of dress uh, with a lot of curses from my family including my parents my, my dear mother because all they were all of them they were hating and resisting that uh, you know i am accepting christ or becoming a christian they told me Uh, the only option is if you want to remain in my home uh, you give up bible and uh, give up jesus and follow all of the traditions so i was uh, i was born and brought up in a place called veeranagam in nayyadam tiruvannapuram so there was no no one is no one was supporting me uh, you know even to be a secret christian to remain as a secret christian within home uh, they did not permit me Uh, so i came out uh, then uh, that was the way that uh, the lord uh, you know uh, gave me or made the circumstances to begin my christian life praise the lord you know that uh, back in india now the hinduism or hindu fundamentalism rss and bjp and those people are uh, ruling the country and lot of uh, uh, opposition to follow christ lot of resistance cultural and family religious uh, social and all these uh, resistance is there it is not uh, seen as a uh, finding the truth or experiencing salvation those things are not understood rather they brand it as conversion and they oppose it as a religious change so that is happening so anyway uh, that's the way that uh, uh, the lord made me the circumstances uh, to start as my christian life uh, then from the scratch uh, and uh, in the street and without the family uh, beginning a christian life as a teenager at the age of 17 uh, that was my lot uh, but the lord was with me praise the lord as the psalm says the father the david says the father and mother has forgotten me forsaken me but the still the lord jesus calls me praise the lord Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How many of you believe this morning that the Lord is holding you? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Now the Lord is saying that we are you are not chosen me but I have chosen you. Amen. That you shall remain and bear fruit for my name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. So that uh, if the Lord called you and he is faithful to lead us. I had lot of struggles and lot of questions and a uh, lot of confusions and all these I have undergone from my body life and family and also even lot of struggles in the church but uh, the lord helped me to go through all that and uh, the, i experienced the call of god for ministry and uh, uh, then i went for training in the seminary as a person even who did not study sunday school so i had to begin all these things afresh uh, then uh, uh, god enabled me even to take a phd so i lost my pre degree pre university study in the name of christ but the, in the same name of christ i was awarded phd amen praise the lord so uh, you know some of the people when we suffer loss for faith we feel trouble and we leave faith but you should not do that praise the lord you know there will you come to the bottom of your cup you feel everything is empty and nothing is there but even in that stage of faith you remain in faith and you don't see any clouds or rains or waters coming but still one day if you remain god will fill your cup hallelujah praise the lord hallelujah. hallelujah it is not a loss the loss is not a loss you know if if it is in the name of christ god will surely reward you very amazingly god helped me to complete my theological training then back now way back in india in different places and uh, 
now I am involved as pastor told as a theological teacher last 15 years also as a pastor also as a missionary uh, like an itinerant person who is traveling and uh, residing in small units of time in different places and uh, witnessing and uh, sharing uh, my experience and preaching the word and so on. This is the way I am involved in the ministry and I am married. My wife is Tessie and I have two children. We live in Tiruvalla and I pray for my family because uh, even no one, not even a single person is in faith for my family. I am praying for them and uh, I enjoy uh, ministry of witnessing and sharing to different Hindus in uh, different sets of uh, I could uh, travel some 17 states of India and share the, uh, my experience and the word with uh, uh, lakhs of people, thousands of people. You know, I enjoy that ministry. I could see many people receiving Christ and uh, many families who are reconciled, broken families. They are mentored, healed only because of the beautiful word of God and beautiful name of Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Christ is the only hope of the world. Hallelujah! And uh, I believe that and uh, I am thankful to the church, to the Lord for giving me this opportunity to share with you this morning. So, I am here now uh, in, the, this, in the US. This is my first time visit. And uh, many a times many people told me you come to US and so on. But I never felt such a need. Uh, because I was very busy in India doing ministry, doing study <laughs> and uh, you know looking after even developing my children and all those things. I was so happy. I was never bothered about whether coming to US or not. But this time Lord uh, made me completely all the provisions uh, and as I got a postdoctoral fellowship in Fuller Theological Seminary in, uh, uh, you know, in uh, Los Angeles. So that's the way I could come here and, uh, I, and I'm happy that in, in one of this weekend of this program I could come to Sacramento and also share my experience here. I know that uh, many of the believers of this uh, community uh, are also from uh, Hindu background or from, uh, from the other states of India and I know that uh, the fellowship of you with this church and uh, the ministry of the beautiful servant of God and other believers in the body of Christ will surely bless you and enrich your faith that you will be deeply rooted in the word and rooted in the law. Amen. Amen. So this uh, morning uh, for sharing I am closing my experience and uh, let us uh, uh, devote ourselves to the word of God. So the theme that God has uh, is, uh, often putting me in my heart is uh, you know walking with the Lord. Uh, often our Christian life we feel very repentant, uh, very dry and uh, sometimes uh, we feel church as a ritual, sometimes we re feel reading Bible is a ritual and sometimes we feel we don't experience the presence of God in our very heart. It's a law. Hallelujah! And uh, no, I want to say that Christian life is nothing but intimacy with God. Praise the Lord. Can the church tell that with me? Amen. Christian life is nothing. Hey, that is not good. Everybody are not all upset. Christian life is nothing. But intimacy with God. But intimacy with God. That, you please let's, uh, say that word intimacy. Intimacy. Praise the Lord. Praise Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Intimacy with the Lord. Praise the Lord. This morning, how many of you experienced an intimate walk with the Lord? Praise the Lord. No, when we come to the church, we should enjoy the singing. We should enjoy listening to the word of God. We should be happy to go to the church. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So, we should experience the presence of God. We should be happy to have the fellowship with the co-believers, with the saints. That's what the Lord is willing and expecting from us. So this morning, please read the book of Genesis. Book of Genesis, the first book in the Bible, and chapter 5, verses 21 to 24. Please, someone can read. Chapter 5, verses 21 
for me, I always, I am not denying the transcendent aspect of God that is there and is philosophizing theology and all these books I read. You know, sometimes after reading pages and pages as a student, as a theological teacher, as a researcher, I do that. A lot of books in the library, finally sitting in the computer, sitting before all the books and theologians you wrote, you feel tired. I leave it on, then go to my bed, sit on my mat and pray, Lord, I want you. And that experience I feel more better. <laughs> Sometimes sitting with all these books. Praise the Lord. Theorizing about the God, I am doing that. That is good. But more than that, experiencing Him, experience His life as a real presence of God, love of God in our heart. That is most important, that matters. Praise the Lord. And I found out that for often people, even for the Pentecostals, I am sorry to tell that, nowadays we lack the real love of God, fear of God, the real presence of God on a daily basis in our life. Church is becoming a tradition. Prayer is a ritual. Family prayer, is another ritual. Now the matter is that we should experience the presence of God, love of God in a very intimate way. It should be real. That's what the Lord is willing from us. You see here, this man, Enoch, he was 60, uh, 65 years old. Till that day, it seems he had no intimate experience with God. But after that, he lived 300 years. And those years, he walked with the God and had an intimate relationship. And we know that the God of the Bible, the Garden of Eden, where there was Adam and Eve, in an innocent age where there was no sin, every evening, God used to come. God was not far away for them. God came. And every evening, God used to come and call Adam, where are you? How was your day? Where is he? How are you doing? Praise the Lord. What all the fruits of the garden did you enjoy today? Do you think God asked that question? It is not there in the Bible, but I surely I did you. Because if God came, and had talked with Adam and Eve, there should be some conversation, right? Praise the Lord! Our God is a God only who speak in God. Our God is not just mamba. He is not like an idol. God is speaking, God is communicating, and God wants to talk to us. And Bible is a record of that relationship between people and God. So God was coming every evening and having intimate fellowship, walking in the garden of Eden with Adam and Eve. And I believe that would be I mean, the most important part of the day that they enjoyed the presence of God and fellowship with God. Praise the Lord! Hallelujah! Hallelujah. In my life, uh, where now I am, as a new Christian, I am bringing my children and my family life. So, uh, I am, for me, I enjoy, I plan the day and execute my work on a timely basis and all that. But I enjoy the morning prayer in my house and also the evening prayer. Where me and my wife and the children, of course, my son does not know how to pray and all. He will play and all. But still, praying together and reading the word and praising God for, you know, leading every day and experiencing the presence of God and handing down that tradition and piety to my children. And there I enjoy. I feel that is the beauty of that whole day. So, that prayer and uh, fellowship with the Lord in a family context is not a waste. It is most uh, worth, uh, you know, most worth the time 
that I feel uh, that I spent. So I believe uh, that is an intimate fellowship that Adam and Eve had in the Garden of Eden was a great time with the God. Then we know somehow the serpent came and they lost the relationship. Sin always takes away the presence of God. And they were sent out of the garden. They were away from God. They have hired themselves from the Lord. Actually, Lord was not hiding, but they, man went away. The Lord never went away from the relationship, but it is man who had broken the relationship and went away from the Lord. Praise the Lord. Then God chose Abel. That was the next generation. And Abel, we read that Cain and Abel. And Abel, you know, God pleased in Abel and in his sacrifice. So God, after Adam and Eve, when God lost their relationship, God developed another relationship with Abel. And he was also talking, loving, and Abel had such a relationship with God. It is not that on a sudden morning without any relationship he is bringing a sacrifice. So God enjoyed that relationship. And again, we know that unfortunately Abel was killed by his brother Cain. Then God lost that relationship. Again, God is searching for someone. And God found Enoch. And God met him when he was 65. He had wife and uh, uh, Methuselah was born that time and then again he had sons and daughters. In our Indian idea of religion, you know, often they think that living in a society is hindrance for having fellowship with God. Sometimes uh, in Indian tradition as a teacher of Hinduism and religion and philosophy, Sometimes they say that if you want to have fellowship with God, you have to be a sannyasi. So you have to leave your family, wife, children, and all the world is evil. So you should go to the Himalaya and leave there. But if all the people go to Himalaya, the peace of the Himalaya will be lost. <laughs> so it is not possible. So but Bible does not say that. You live in the society. The society is of course sinful. It is corrupted. Lot of issues in the society. So, Abel and Enoch could walk with the Lord. He did not go to a mountain. He did not go to an island. Rather, he lived in a corrupted society. The book of Jude says that, book of Jude, there is only one chapter there, but in that book mentions a very, very concrete passage about Enoch. Even that we don't see in the Old Testament. And Jude is writing that Enoch lived among people of, you know, ungodliness. So in his society, people spoke filthy words. There was murder. The culture of murder, bloodshed, violence, corruption, drinking, fornication, adultery, and all kinds of ungodliness was prevailing in this society. And Book of Jude says, Enoch not only led a godly life, he was a prophet who prophesied the judgment of God to an ungodly generation. So, Enoch was a man who lived in the midst of corruption, ungodliness. And we know that he had a responsibility. He had many sons and daughters. Even nowadays, raising up two children itself is very difficult. You have to work day and night. Praise the Lord. So, Leading a family life, raising a children, 
living in a corrupted society is it possible even in that context to of course now i am placing all of you like you know with the family and responsibility although american society it's also i know it's a good society but at the same time sin and devil and corruption and uncourtness everything is there why is it not the culture around is may not be godly but in, even in the midst of that is it possible to lead a godly life is it possible to have an intimate walk with the god why is it not hallelujah you know to live in such a corrupted society but still he did not become a corrupt person he did not fell in sin rather he had an intimate relationship with god for is not you know of course he had mother in law father in law brother in law sister in law he had his own family he had his wife and many children Maybe he has to go every morning for work. Of course, otherwise how he will feed these children? He has to go to the supermarket, fish market, fruit market in order to buy food. So he talked with the society there. He worked there. Maybe there was school, so he had to take admission and take all these children to the school, pay their monthly fee and other things. So he lived a family life. And he had all the responsibilities, and he was bringing up a family. Not a short time, long years, three hundred years. But in the midst of that, he had an intimate relationship with God, an unbreakable relationship with God. Praise the Lord! Hallelujah! Hallelujah! So unless, how can God walk with Enoch? without agreeing with him so his lifestyle was pleasing to god and the heart of enoch and the heart of god were united the mind of enoch and the mind of god was united and the spirit of enoch and the spirit of lord worked together praise the lord experiencing intimacy with the god It's a very beautiful relationship. You know, Christianity is so beautiful when you discover the love of Lord more deeply and deeply and deeply. How many of you enjoy that? Why is it not? Hallelujah! So, you know, enjoyed the relationship with the Lord. How many things they might have talked? walking together 300 years if somebody can write a book about the conversation between enoch and god it will be volumes as friends they talked a lot am i right praise the lord so every day enoch and god used to see and walk together by holding hands as a friend not just one day or two day you know in the mercy of god the revival should not be for few hours in the church it should continue 24 and 7 should continue for a whole life so 300 years he was walking with the god listening to god and you know enjoying that intimacy So this morning, I want to encourage all of you. When you live in the society, with all the responsibilities, confusions, the stress, and uh, you know, lot of ambitions, lot of corrupted culture, lot of temptations, lot of advertisement, lot of digital media, or whatever the trends of society can have, is all our visual. we feel that these are the this material world and whatever we are there we feel that is something very important i am not denying that but everything may not be important 
So when we leave that, sometimes most of the people get a secular, very materialistic, influenced by the world, they become lovers of the world. But Bible tells that, don't be lovers of the world, but even when you live in the world, be lovers of God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. God is seeking for lovers. God is willing to walk with you. Are you ready? Praise the Lord. God first loved us and he wants to have that intimate relationship. Now God will speak to us very intimately. So Enoch was enjoying that great relationship with God. So walking with the Lord is very important. So religion should not be a custom, should not be a ritual. It is not be reduced to be a society and it is not to show to anyone else but we love the Lord that's why we are in the church. We love the Lord that's why we read the Bible. We love the Lord that's why we sing. So whatever we do for the Lord we should enjoy it. Praise the Lord! Hallelujah! Hallelujah. So I want you to revive that relationship with the Lord this morning. And I will stop my words soon. I shall share two of my experiences with the Lord. I am not, I cannot claim that I am walking like an Enoch, no. Enoch had, but I enjoyed this word, the scripture I meditated many a times and the Lord spoke to me and in my own life I am encouraged by these words, by the life of Enoch. And it inspired me to walk closely with the Lord. That I am sure. And we know that, you know, finally the love of Enoch and God became so strong. And even God does not want even a separation with Enoch even through his physical death. So he just took it. That is maybe the only reference uh, concerning a person in the Bible only about Enoch. Because uh, that much the relationship with God became that strong that uh, God does not want even to separate with Enoch even through death. Rather he was no more because God took him. Such a reference in all the Bible only about this person. So I am sure that God is not a theory, God is not a doctrine, God is not an idea, God is not a transcendent being somewhere, but God is the one who is so near to you and nearer than your breath. Praise the Lord! And Jesus told, you abide with me. As the branches abide in a vine. Close, unbreakable relationship. Intimate and always being connected. Praise the Lord! I felt some of the times the presence of the Lord very close. And uh, I want to share one experience, one story. It really happened in my life in relation to Silicon Valley. I heard of Silicon Valley yesterday. I never been, I have never been to Silicon Valley. But I had a great experience with a person who came from Silicon Valley. It was the way back in 2004. One fine morning, I was uh, traveling at 3.30 from Kollam to Kottam in a passenger train. So as you are an Indian community, you know the passenger train, every compartment is separated. In between in one compartment and another compartment, there is no connection. You cannot travel inside the train. You have to come out from one compartment to another compartment. We call it the bogey. So, every Monday I used to travel that time from Kollam to Kottayam to teach in a Bible college. So, I used to, there was a passenger train going from Kollam to Ernagulam. And I used to get in there 3.30 every morning. And 7 o'clock, this train would reach in Kote. So, 
Uh, so I used to rise at 3 o'clock every morning and the whole day I have to teach. So immediately when I enter the train, I make, I make my bed there with a newspaper and a bed sheet and everything and I used to sleep. Because 3 o'clock to 7 o'clock in the morning, sitting is not that good. So I used to sleep there. Then one day, I made my bed in the train, I entered 3.30. The train is going to start and I made my bird and I went to sleep like all other days. But suddenly, it is not an imagination, very intimately, Holy Spirit told me, you take your bird, don't sleep. It was not mine from my mind, but I, in my spirit, I can listen that very clearly the voice of God. You take your bird, don't sleep. Get out of this bogey compartment. It was 3.25, 3.30 the train would start. Only 5 minutes. Then I thought, is it my imagination or it is the voice of the Lord? Actually, I went to sleep. I was tired. 3.30 morning, you know. Who wants to be awake, right? Everybody wants to sleep that time. Okay. So I thought again I will sleep. It is simply my feeling. But again, but something is preventing me. Telling, take your bed. Don't sleep. Get out of this compartment. And again, I want to sleep. Again, no. Take your bed. Get out. Don't sleep. The voice of the Lord is coming frequently again and again. And the train is going to start. But suddenly, I obeyed the Lord. I took my bed sheet and everything and bag and everything. I got out of the compartment. Then another voice. You walk towards, uh, you know, a few bogies. Then I passed to one compartment, another compartment, another compartment, another compartment. The train is going to start only one or two minutes. Then and as I was walking, when I came to one compartment, the Lord told, you enter this compartment. Then I entered. You may wonder, is it real? It is real. In the Acts of the Apostles, we read that the Holy Spirit took Philip from one place to another place. It was not like that. The Lord told me, so I came out of the compartment 3.30 morning. I was not knowing what to do. Then I entered that compartment. Okay. Then I was sitting there. And the Lord told me, today I will show you one person. You have to share the gospel with that person. Then I understood. Why? The Lord don't want me to sleep 3.30 in the morning, like every day. And that person was sitting in this particular compartment. So from where I was, God took me out and told me to enter his, his compartment. Praise the Lord. And I sat, the train started. Within a few minutes, I saw a middle-aged man maybe 50 plus that time, he came and sat opposite to me. And the Lord spoke to me that already he gave me the message, why he brought me so, and he told me to speak with this person. And that person was there. Then, he's, he was a man more than 50 years old, uh, around that, uh, middle-aged man. And he told me that uh, I, I, I am a person from Kotayam, I work in Silicon Valley. He was a Catholic man, he lived uh, near Kotayam in a place called Wallasa. And He told me that I am working in Silicon Valley, I am not familiar with the train routes here in India. So the previous night, he travelled from the Koyamathur side, from Tamil Nadu side, and in the night, he was supposed to get down at the court. But he slept, he could not. So he came and all the way south and he, 
I know to understand this message, understanding the geography of Kerala is necessary. I am sorry. Okay. So he came down to a station. He lost the, his station and he came down to Kollam and he entered this train. This was the first train then to go. 3.30. And he was there. He told that I lost. Uh, I, 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 you know, I could not rise up. I slept in the night. And I got up here, now I am going back to Kodlam, uh, Ko sorry, Kotten, to my house. Okay. Then the Lord told me, he did not, you know, purpose, you know, he did not lose it accidentally, but purposefully. Praise the Lord. God brought me, this person from Silicon Valley, in the morning, in a Kodlam passenger train. And God told me to enter his compartment. Then he was opposite and I was there. Then I told about my story also. We became, we started talking. He is a person who was from Catholic uh, Church, traditional Christian, but in the Silicon Valley, some Hindu guru came, he talked about yoga, meditation and everything. And he had an ashram after some Coimbatore, that area in Tamil Nadu. And this person became, a, this Catholic Christian became a disciple of Hindu guru. And when he came for a vacation, he went and lived in his ashram for one week and he was traveling back to Kotem. That time he lost the way and he came, you know, he got down at Kollam and met me. I said, oh. So God brought that person and he don't want me to sleep. He took me from my bogey to his bogey. I said, oh. Then I told my story. I was a Hindu priest, but now I am a follower of Christ. And he told me this morning is a wonderful morning. Two contrasts are meeting each other. One who left Hinduism and became a Christian, another left Christianity and became a Hindu. So the two contrast is meeting. Okay, so he was working in Silicon Valley, that's what he told me. And we spoke in English and also a little bit in Malayalam. Till 7 o'clock. Till we departed from the train, he shared the gospel and he was arguing all the Hindu philosophy and other thing and I was talking my experience and the gospel. And finally when we left, he told me, one week I lived in the ashram and I practiced yoga, somewhere I felt some darkness. But now when you shared the gospel, I feel some light in my heart. I feel Jesus' love is real. Amen. He told that much, then we departed. Amen. Praise the Lord. So what I am telling is, God can talk to you in a very intimate manner. I never believed even this experience. Sometimes I believe it didn't really happen, but it really happened. Praise the Lord. The Lord took me from where I want to sleep, 3.30, and in this way God spoke to me. So God can talk with us in a very intimate manner. He can change the paths, the route we take. He can change our conversation. He can bring in relationship with you persons in a very amazing manner. So Lord's work is never limited by any context, any law or time. God can work amazingly. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. God's ways are amazing. You cannot measure it with your reason. So God spoke to me in a very intimate way. That was the one incident. And another incident was that I was in Kashmir. This was another time. And uh, in a place called Majalta, I was with a Nepali missionary. And we traveled about some 25 kilometers by walk to a place, village. And we started distributing tract, Bible, and in the homes which gave us a seat, we sat there and shared the gospel. So we were doing that and almost half a village we covered. So we reached that village, we started early morning, we reached there by 9.30 or 10. And about some two hours we worked visiting some homes, sharing the gospel with a part of broken Hindi we knew from that time. That missionary knew very well and we both went and shared the gospel tracts and some of the houses we were sharing about Jesus. And suddenly, around, uh, around some 
means around 12 o'clock, a person opened his house. I told you, come. When he entered the hall of the house, suddenly he went outside and he locked the front door. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So we both were seated there. There, within five minutes, that person went and the villages, other village people began to gather there. And some of them were coming with the big sticks, some of them with the stones, some of them with the knives and other things. And everybody looking at us very stirringly. With the cruel eyes, all eyes falling upon us. Some 70, 80 people, they gathered all the villages. And even some of them, they wanted to stone us. So, I thought, today the life is finished. But it's enough. Because there is no bike, no cycle. It is, you know, very, uh, you know, mountain area in Kashmir, 25 kilometers you have to walk. So even you cannot run and escape from those people. There is no police, no vehicle, nothing. And only we are two people. And even I was not knowing Hindi properly. When I was there, then I closed my eyes and I began to pray. Silently, Lord, take me, deliver me, and I am really fearful. I don't know what to do. You know, then the word the Lord told me in that critical moment, the first voice. Don't fear. Second, nothing will happen to you. And third, that is that was more interesting. The Lord told me, you don't close your eyes, you open your eyes, then you pray. Don't close eyes. If you close your eyes, they will think that you are a liar or you are a culprit. So whatever they are looking, you open your eyes. Look at them. That's what the third message the Lord spoke to me. Then I obeyed all that. I became confident. Although I was fearful, the Lord told me, don't be afraid. Nothing will happen to you. And don't close the eyes, but you open your eyes and look at them. I need it. You know, suddenly this people, there was commotion and all the problem. We thought uh, everything is finished. If these 70 people beat us with the stick and the stone. <laughs> And they had knives and everything. What will happen? Nothing. No? Then there is nothing will remain. Everything will be finished. That can happen. You know, but the Lord told. And God spoke to me very intimately. And I would say, some of the persons, we were there almost an hour inside that home. And some of the leaders of this village, they came and they spoke to us. And they spoke especially with the missionary who knew Hindi very well. That time I was knowing Hindi in a very broken manner. But the Lord strengthened me and spoke to me even in that very critical moment. Praise the Lord! So what happened? In the previous night, some liars came, thieves came, and they get into the village. They have stolen their agricultural products, money, Vessels, some of the animals, everything in the night, and those thieves went away. And in the during the daytime, 10 o'clock, we appeared and we were distributing tracks. So they thought we are the thieves. That's why they locked us inside the room. Not for the gospel, but they misunderstood. But whatever may be in their beat, we have to, you know. Praise the Lord. Then these people were, they want to prove us that we are not thieves or we are liars. We are not liars. So then the missionary with me, he told that uh, we are not liars, we have not taken any of your things. We came to share the gospel and we talk about holiness, righteousness and truth. We don't uh, do all these things. And he told that we are coming from such a village and they were not knowing. And finally he told that this is my house owner and I am living in one of his buildings for rent. And by God's grace, these persons, some of these village persons, they knew that Makan Malik, the house owner. 
then somehow they argued and they talked and finally they said okay we are not liars we will release you then these leaders they sent out the crowd and they told us now you don't give any tract or anything you go out of the village then after one hour after a big struggle we thought today everything is finished but nothing happened as the lord told without anything happening we came out from that village very safely praise the lord yes sir lord hallelujah hallelujah so what i am telling is god can speak to you very intimately you are not alone hallelujah so this morning let us pray before the lord hallelujah we are in the presence of the lord and we are called to be walkers with the god and our faith is not just taking baptism at one point of time or sometimes taking the lord's supper that is not the top of our faith baptism is necessary lord's supper is necessary but that, that does not mean that it is only only in those moments you experience presence of god no god is available to you when you are in the real struggle in your profession in your office when you face the real headache when you have the real problems and challenges of life when somebody is there to persecute you the most critical times of your life god is there god can speak to you and it is possible to have a holy life in this corrupted world praise the lord even in the context of unholiness when the all the world is evil still you no need to depart from this world still you can have a godly life so this morning let us hear the voice of god very intimately let us walk like enoch let us try to have an intimate relationship with the lord praise the lord may god bless us